Uh, but my name is Scott McManus. And I'm the professor and coordinator for the Interactive Media Management Interaction Design Program. Uh, a mouthful for the program name for sure. Uh, we tend to focus on the interaction design part of it. Uh, that tends to be the, the word that circulates around, especially when you look for jobs and things like that. Um, as um, Kyle mentioned, we are also a one-year post-grad certificate program. We say that, but then we reduce it to eight months because that's what it really is. It's a very intense, very quick program, uh, but we also are very proud that where students come in and where they end up in only seven months is pretty incredible how much they can learn during that time and how prepared they can be for the job market during that time. So often I get this question is what is interaction design? Oftentimes it's focused on user experience design or UX design, you might have heard about it, but people still are unfamiliar with our field. So I thought I'd just sort of introduce it here and, and sort of use an analogy to, to wrap your head around it. So let's say you were going to build a house. Um, you'd probably hire a contractor, a builder who has these skills to make sure that your house is sound and then it's stable and it's functional, all those types of things. But it's likely a fairly small company where most of the tradespeople have hard skills where they can build things. Um, the same is true for simpler digital techno digital uh, platforms, like maybe a simple website or something, it doesn't take really much to build a simple website, just some strong technical skills and a little bit of visual design skills. Um, if you look over on the right, you see this massive sort of building. This is a, a, a uh, arts and science museum in, in Valencia, Spain. And when you're building a large structure like this, you're going to want to hire an architect, right? And what do architects do? They focus on both the visual and the functional side of buildings, making something that's beautiful, that reflects the brand and what they're trying to convey, as well as make it very functional, easy to navigate, easy to find what you want, easy to learn, things like that. That's who we are for the digital world. So with digital platforms like websites, apps, um, you know, maybe even technologies like virtual reality or augmented reality, we are the information architects that help um, organize the information in such a way that makes it easy for people to use, visually appealing, um, all those things that you know you want a good uh, physical architect to do, we do for the digital world. So that's what UX is, if you've heard about this. We're not quite engineers, we're, we're, we work in the technical field, but we work with engineers a lot to make sure that their designs, which work technically um, correct, work for human beings, work for people, and um, are easy to use. So I often show this sort of diagram when I'm introducing people to the program as well, because our program is interdisciplinary, meaning we take people from all sorts of different backgrounds, because it takes all sorts of different um, sort of uh, fields in order to do interaction design properly. So the first one over there on the pink is psychology. Uh, we ton, we t have a couple of students in the past who have sort of uh, more of a human behavior background, looking at the psyche of human beings. And this is really important because unlike graphic design, we're really interested in you know, what people want, uh, what they need and sort of how they work at things. Um, the creativity comes later after we sort of learn from people, but we really need to do deep dive on people and human behavior if we're going to design things that are easy for them to use. And that's typically affiliated with the um, job of a UX researcher or the field of UX research. Um, next is you know, information and tech information processing or IT. Um, a lot of our students also come from backgrounds in computer science, information technology, computer coding, something like that. Like that. In fact, um, user experience design or interaction design came out of a computer science field called human computer interaction. And this um, was in the 80s when people were, you know, building all these systems for uh, with computers, but realized that they had to build them for other human beings, that there was a human element missing from the engineering field. So they created um, HCI. Um, and so we've sort of grown on that with UX. It does require a little bit of coding in class, but really it requires data modeling, this idea of, you know, what's possible with this technology, what are the limitations? What can we build and design with? And then finally, lots of our students actually come from graphic design or graphic arts and visual communication skills. This is typically where they go on to the field of UI or user interface design. And this is where we make the screens pretty, as I say. So any apps that you've ever used, if you've really liked the visual design of it, it's usually a user interface designer uh, that's behind it. And we, um, we develop those skills as well in our class. And lots of our students go on to be UI designers. So here's some of our work samples. Um, this is one kind of work sample that I love showing because a lot of people might be unfamiliar with what this is, but this is called a wireframe. And a wireframe is a design with is exactly what it sounds like and looks like here. It's where we design the functionality behind the app or website. Um, and we don't quite add all the visual elements. 
um, to it yet. So what we want to do here is we want to add all just the structural elements. So we're organizing the information. We're discussing what information takes priority, what information goes where, uh, you know, what screens connect to each other to make a flow of information, you know, easily and usable. But we're stripping away all that visual design because we really want to concentrate on function. And that I think, again, is a separate, um, separates us from, from graphic design. They're really heavily concentrated on how it looks. We want to concentrate on how it functions. Functions. We really, um, you know, focus on that uh, fo form follows function, right? We discover how something works first and make sure that it works well, and then we can uh, work on making it really beautiful and, and elegant. And so this is our final product. Once we've done wireframes and tested them out with people and make sure that functionality works, we make them nice and pretty, and we actually create clickable, workable prototypes. And a prototype is like an app, but it doesn't have the code behind it. So it's much quicker and easier to build. And so large tech companies really love this idea because instead of getting their engineers and developers to build something that they're not really sure if people want or is easy to use, they can use designers to design something, um, like we see a couple of screenshots here. Uh, we can use use different technologies like you might have heard of Figma or Sketch or Adobe Experience Design or Adobe XD. And these programs help us make these graphic designs clickable. So you can actually click on the buttons here. It takes you to new screens and it looks and feels like a working app, but it, it requires a lot less upfront work. And so it can be built, tested and really, you know, analyzed before it's actually implemented into uh, the actual coding and development part of the process. And so on the left here um, is a babysitting app that was created uh, just last year by an international student. This is kind of a great idea where you need a babysitter in a hurry, but you want somebody that you can trust. Well, here's a system that has ratings and, you know, contact information, and they had built it all out uh, with multiple screens so that it was easy to see how you could kind of book a babysitter just like you use Uber at home. Um, and the one on the right is called Kirker. It was developed by another international student uh, for uh, helping animals, uh, abandoned animals, stray dogs, cats, things like that, uh, so that people could find them, report them, and get them to a safe shelter. And so what we do a lot in the time in the program is we say we're designers that solve problems. Um, you've probably always heard that term, you know, there's an app for that. And there's a reason there's so many different apps nowadays that are on your, your devices is because they all solve little problems in your life. And so that's what we love to, to give to students is this idea of, do you know something somebody that needs help? Do you know a problem that needs solving? Well, maybe there's a digital technology that can help out. Maybe you can be the designer to build and create that, um, create that idea, you know, use those creative skills to develop something brand new and actually put something into the world that can be developed and engineered uh, to help people out. So, um, you know, our, our, our students love sort of this process of learning about people, wireframing something out and discussing different ideas, and then finally polishing off um, a final design that they can put in somebody's hand, make it clickable, and, uh, you know, get, see their reaction as they, they, you know, they just love these kind of designs that solve problems. When graduating from the IMMID program, there's lots of different areas they can go in. But as I showed in the previous slide, I tend to group things into three different bins. That is researcher, designer, UX designer, and UI designer. And this because this follows a process that we tend to do a lot in, in UX design. And that is we learn about something. So we research it. We learn about people, the problem, um, all everything that we can to sort of set ourselves into the environment. Empathy is a huge skill in, uh, in UX design. You hear that a lot lately, but especially in our field, we have to sort of understand what people feel and how what their goals are, their frustrations, if we're going to design for them. So that's why research plays such a big role. The researchers tend to pass it along to a UX designer. These people are the people who build those wireframes that I showed you, not necessarily the polished final product, but an area where they can ideate or come up with a lot of ideas on how to solve that problem, discuss them, test them out, and sort of make sure that when they pass it along to the final designer or the engineers, that they've come up with a solution that they know works. And then you have your UI designer, the person that takes that final product, polishes it up, uses their you know, color theory skills, their typography skills, their photography skills, and really make you know, apps and websites pop so that they're attractive. Because as we know, although uh, design is a combination of function and form, that form really matters. It pulls people in. Um, and so it's really critical for companies that they get great designers who understand how to design, not just anything, but design specifically for screens and technology. 
Um, and then, so as we go through this field, like I said, it's a very new field and the jobs are actually changing all the time. So if you do a job search, you might also see uh, job postings for interaction designer, which is closely related to UX designer or even product designer. Um, product designer might sound something physical, but products are also described as digital apps or digital products. Uh, you can think of your Gmail as a product or your Google Maps as a product, right? Same company, different products. So product designer comes up a lot. Um, a lot of our students have gone on to just be strategists, whether it be technology, design, marketing strategists. They understand the digital world uh, much stronger having come out of the program. So they're really interested in helping companies better their digital strategy and understand their customers and their digital needs better. And then finally, some of our students with a little more experience, sometimes we get uh, mature students because we come from a background, we're a post-grad program where people already have a diploma or a degree. Uh, people have some um, experience in, an, in the industry, so they want to move on to something like a product manager, which might work with a design team and work, uh, you know, underneath them might be a researcher, a designer, a UI designer, they might be the manager, and they might be able to control um, you know, each sort of part of the process. And that's what we really try to do in the quick um, eight months that you're in this program is introduce you to every single step of the program. Even if you're not interested in research, if you have a background in graphic design, we're going to teach it to you because it's a very important sort of part of the process to understand what researchers do. If you're more into human psychology, we're still going to do the coding a little bit and the design and graphic design a little bit, because if you're going to, you know, work with these teams, um, you know, you have to understand what they do and how they do it. And then and lastly, if I can just say, you know, that's another really important part about our program is teamwork. We work a lot in teams because teams are critical uh, for this industry in terms of who you're going to work with, having different ideas, different job titles, all those types of things. But being able to work on such a large project that could, you know, affect potentially millions of people uh, means it requires a lot of different people with a lot of different skills. And so we really encourage students to develop on their teamwork skills while they're here. Um, it's one of the strongest things that students often tell me when going to apply for jobs that I really got to emphasize, you know, my team projects and my team skills in my portfolio. And that seemed to really wow employers.